Right, uh, I'm, my name is uh, Colin John Neal, and I am. Um, I was born in 1936 on the 24th of September. And where were you born? And, and I was born in Cosham, near mm -hmm. Portsmouth, which was a military hospital. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I, uh, my father, who was in the uh, an army regular, was posted to India, mm -hmm. and um, all, already had a brother then who was two years older than me. Mm -hmm who was born in Salisbury at a military establishment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent a couple of years, uh, less than two years, I should say, in India, when we was coming back because my father's career in the army had finished. And um, when he got back, he had to re-enlist. Mm -hmm. And we, grandparents had moved by then to Coggeshall. Mm -hmm. And my sister was born, mm. and uh, so we settled in Coggeshall, in the village of Coggeshall, moving in various houses. Whereabouts did you live in Coggeshall, first of all? First of all, we was um, at the hamlet, mm -hmm. next to the then Hare and Hounds. From then we moved up to Tilkey, mm -hmm. the Tilkey Gates, mm -hmm. and we got a much better house, so my mother said, at the Chase at Tilkey, mm -hmm. and we was there, at the, 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 I think it was the Dunkirk, situation when everybody was swamped with squaddies mm -hmm. and um, we were supposed to bill it two or three and my mother said that she'd move up and my grandmother. Where would your grandparents live? They lived at Scrolls Hall. Mm -hmm. What was your grandfather? He was a horseman on uh, mm -hmm. Holfield Grange Estate, mm -hmm. Colonel Hill. And mm -hmm. How long did you live there? I lived there till I was 16 mm -hmm. until he became too old to work mm -hmm. and he was put in the, an old people's home. Not. Um, in Braintree, mm. and um, and obviously it was a tied cottage, so the council had to find us somewhere to live. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we was um, they found us a house in the hamlet, mm -hmm. which I later bought. Which you're now living. And now living now. in years. Now going back, um, you were a young lad during the war years. During the war years, which uh, to us seemed like a lot of fun to young people. It must have been mm. terrifying for the mm. the adults, mm. but. Uh, that was a lot of fun and there was things happened that probably now yeah. would make the headlines yes. but uh, mm. a lot of different things happened um, like there was a, somebody pinched a flare gun once where we thought that was great fun mm -hmm. uh, to fire that. Although, Where'd you get that from? Well supposedly from up the airdrome, Mark's Hall from mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. but um, they were elder boys who stole that but we was brought in to do the dirty walk, like pulling the trigger. How old were you then, about? I should say then, I would have been about seven to eight. Mm -hmm. So did you go up the airfield quite a lot? We did, yeah. up the other end, yeah. I might add, mm -hmm. because the Yanks were very generous mm -hmm. with their rations and and that meant a lot to us, like biscuits and yeah. chewing gum and even old clothes and belts and mm -hmm. fags and so yeah. Which uh, we used to bring back for the gr grown up sort of thing. Yeah. Well, where was your dad this time? My dad was, I don't know exactly where he was. He was stationed. I, don't, I honestly don't know because mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see much of him actually. Mm -hmm. And your mum, was she working or just, just, just uh, looking after your children? Just looking after the, the house and the children. And grand. Yeah, that, in those days. Mm. That wasn't the done thing for ladies to work, although she did mm. get one, once or twice she helped sprinkle in the whole field grange, which was quite a nice little number. Yeah. And in between that she'd done field work when it yeah. was about. What other things did you get up to during the war years? Well, uh, I suppose the main thing was, I would say, scratching off the Yanks, but obviously being young we was also taught how to call, catch rabbits, mm -hmm. and which then was a crime. Mm -hmm. I might add, that was quite uh, How did you set about doing that? Uh, snares, I was quite, showed it, kept snares at quite a young age. Mm -hmm. Set snares. And, did uh, you have ferrets? Later. Mm -hmm. Later we had ferrets, which caused more trouble than that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I had to get rid of them. You didn't get hold of a shotgun? Um, well, <laughs> we did, yes. <laughs> um, I, I was quite young when I went out with a gun. In the middle of the night, mm -hmm. I shot, uh, I think, five pheasants mm -hmm. and 
sort of when they see what I'd done, uh, the parents and grandparents were absolutely horrified, mm -hmm. so that disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, because well, that was the old you, cottage, remember. You know, of course, if your granddad worked at Holfield Grange, yeah. he, he could look at the sack. Exactly, and yeah. lose a house, which yeah. my friends did actually, yeah. for a pinch of a Christmas tree. Oh, it must have been sort of two or three hundred in a little copse, and they took one and yeah. that was seen through the window. Yeah. Yeah. So they went, and, that, and um, they ended up at Stuart Bell, mm -hmm. who gave him a job immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was the other farmer? At Belcher's Grange. Mm -hmm. yeah. the... Now tell me, what, what... My brother was older, he took part in some of the escapades but not as many as I did no. because he wasn't so easily led mm -hmm. and he had an eye for different things and mm -hmm. in all fairness Harry Rolton who was the local Baptist minister really took him under his wing mm -hmm. and he helped my brother a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean whether my brother would admit that now I don't know but I know he did when I look back. Mm -hmm. He virtually had a home there. Yeah. Of course you got baby had a sister. Sister yeah. Yes. How, much, how much younger was she? Than you? She was two years younger. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was made to do a lot of work from a very young age, mm -hmm. which uh, girls were expected to do then. That, that's right. Yeah. Which I, even at that age, I didn't think was fair. Yeah. We all had to do our bit, but mm -hmm. she seemed to do yeah. much more, which she was proud to do. Yeah. Mm. Now tell me, in your granddad's house, it must have been a bit cramped, wasn't it? That was very cramped. Mm -hmm. um, I think at times there was sort of eight or nine. Sometimes nine people in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was three children. My mum and my dad was five at times. Mm -hmm. Granny, granddad, cousin, and uncle, mm -hmm. and plus another uncle that was a little bit of a mm -hmm. tear away, and he mm -hmm. often used to come out there to keep out the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most in the summer summer months we virtually lived outside, mm -hmm. yeah. or as we called it, a, a wash house, which was a, a set aside where the washing was done mm -hmm. and the. Mm -hmm. Pump. Now tell me the house itself, I mean, did you have electricity there? No electric, no, no. there was no electric. We, uh, Any... Everything, what... from the time I lived there to the time I left, we pumped water and candlelight. Mm -hmm. That was it. What, um, with a well? There was, there was a well that couldn't be seen, mm -hmm. but that was underneath that we pumped water from the... Mm -hmm. So everything, all, all household water had to be carried in? Yes, all mm -hmm. carried in. And. Uh, Toilet facilities? Uh, down the garden. Down the garden, yes. Yes, which yeah. was a hole in a lump of wood. Yes. So, um, it meant a lot of hard work for everybody. Uh, that was, yeah. yeah particularly for your mum and grandma. Yes, that was, but I must say, as a child, I loved it. Yes. Loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I moved up the hamlet, it really broke my heart. Because yeah. I moved back for a short time to be with my granny. <laughs> <laughs> but, my granddad mm -hmm. thought there was only one person who could do the garden, mm -hmm. and that was him. Yeah. But we tried to help. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did he uh, did he uh, go down the pub drinking at all? My granddad. Mm, very little. No. He used to work on Saturday night. He'd, yes. he'd go, yeah. but it's unbelievable because he used to walk to a pub, the Bird and Hand, and have a couple of pints, and mm -hmm. from there he walked through like three or four miles to Patterswood Compasses. Yes. Have a couple there, then yeah. come home. Yes. Mm. Or if you didn't stop at the lamb, that was. Yeah, his right. pubs were very fun. And that's after working all day on the farm. Yes, that's right, yeah. Which a lot of them did do that. Yeah. A lot of them walked. Did you ever get involved with the harvest at all? Uh, when I was old enough, mm. when I was 14, 13, 14, Root used to give me a job for six weeks mm -hmm. every year and he used to pay me. He was very good to us, really, because he used to pay me for the wage of a boy of 18, mm -hmm. which. In them days, when my mother did, it was a lot of money. Yeah. How much was that? Any idea? Uh, that was that would be about three or four pound a week. Mm, oh, very, very good. And my father, by then, had come out of the army, mm. and he wasn't a well man because of an accident he'd had with the gun carriage, mm, mm. and he did leave. Mm -hmm. And I later found that he lived like a tramp for the rest of his life, mm. oh, which very he sad. couldn't. Very yeah, sad. It was sad. He did, did get a, a modified pension for it, mm -hmm. but um, there's no sympathy for head wounds. Did your mum get any of that pension? No. No, she got nothing then. Nothing. Nothing. No. Apart from what you boys and there was one or two, there was a couple of grants to help you out when we went to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hitchham and mm -hmm. another grant, I forget what it was, and then then she got a job at King's and worked at King's. Yes. But we were fortunate enough to be living with grandmother and grandfather, yes. which helped. Yes. But there was no chance of leaving and moving no. away. 
So no income at all apart from what raised in the house yourself? That's right, yeah. Mm. Oh, not very difficult. Mm. Now, I believe you, you did mention before about going up the water tower or something at the end. Oh, of the... yeah, after the war was over. After the war was over. And one of our adventures was um, we went up there and my mate said, did you know that the water tower is full of frogs? Mm -hmm. We climbed, it must have been 30, at least foot up. Mm -hmm. Climbed in the tank, caught a few frogs, yeah. and threw them at this farmer's sons as they walked underneath. <laughs> <laughs> when I think now, I mean, I would, oh, if my boy done that, I'd kill him. It was raining frogs then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Now, do you remember any of the uh, other activities during the war? I mean, do you remember the home guard, anything like that? Uh, they used to come up, uh, we'd see them march around and their activities in the fields. Your granddad wasn't a home guard? No, right. no, he was um, a horseman. He, was, he used to start a bit up at four in the morning because mm -hmm. they used to work long hours in the morning because oh, they were short men. Yes. And, uh, but the warden, the air wardens were hated mm -hmm. because they were like um, locals who'd become policemen mm -hmm. and that didn't suit people who no. None, but they had to do that. They had a job to do, mm -hmm, yeah. and they'd done it very yeah, well. On my yeah. head. Now the town itself. Do you remember the shops out here, or which or? Yes, uh, that was all very friendly, mm -hmm. and to us, shopkeepers were important. In mm -hmm. those days, they were the middle class, mm -hmm. and but I, I could you couldn't fold them when you think back. Mm -hmm. uh, very everybody was nice during the war. Okay. That wasn't until uh, after the war when sort of greed stepped in. Yes, yes. Yeah. The first school I went to was um, the council school at Coggeshaw and St Peter's Road. St Peter's Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was called the council school. Yes, yes. But we used to walk past the church school during the war mm -hmm. and there used to be a heap of uh, scrap metal in the corner which you used to add to if you could find it around the dumps. Oh yes. And uh, for the war effort. Oh, interesting. It, yeah, that was... Um, you had quite a walk, didn't you, from... That's right, that was yeah. about a mile. Although we had a bikes at an early age, but how my mother conjured them up, I'll never know. Across the fields and... Well, down Ambridge Road. Yeah, oh yes. Mm -hmm. That was um, mm -hmm. not so bad coming to work at school. That yeah. was all downhill. Going back was a bit of a push, but... Did you have a f um, food at school at all those days? Uh, free dinners. Free dinners. Because my dad was in the army. Yeah. Which I always found very nice. Everybody's mm. demanded better, but I couldn't fold them, really. Yeah. What about the teachers at the time, were they? Um, most of them were very good. <laughs> you got the occasional bad one. Okay. I won't mention her name. <laughs> but she uh, she created a hate in me for schools. Mm -hmm. She was a notorious. In fact, the headmaster's son was taken out of the class and put in a different class. No. But I never had that. That, that fortune. <laughs> I never uh, had the good fortune. Do you ever get the cane or anything there? Yeah. A couple of times they used to cane on your hands. Yes. What once, was that? What was it for? Yeah. Once I volunteered for it because I was like the others, but they never caught me. Mm -hmm. But I thought rather than take the punishment off them later, mm -hmm. I think I'd rather have the cane. So well, I, I well, volunteered. I see. What well, they were? They were bullied you, would they? I think so. Yes. The way they was looking at me, I'd got no chance. Yeah. But that was only the simple things they cane you for. Yes. Nothing. Yeah. No. They used to keep law and order mm -hmm. quite stringently, but there again, there was no need to do the things you'd done. No, no. Oh, Dolly Haywood was very nice. Yes. I think everybody was taught by her. Yeah. Even after I left and before mm. I went there. Yes. In actual fact, I saw her photo of the other day. Yeah. And she looked, she was very young then. Yes, yeah. And you take part in your sport at all? Football. Mm. I used to play football. Well, actually, um, played football for Coggeshall School when I was very young. Mm -hmm. You were good at it, were you? I. I shone a bit then, yeah, but mm -hmm. I've more off as I got older. And already before about the Americans, I mean, they must be quite a shock when they arrived. Well, that was funny, really. We'd never seen a black man, and there was about three of them stood on the Market Hill. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they were staring at us, and we were staring at them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we was quite surprised, because mm -hmm. we'd never imagined what they looked like. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, we never had much to do with the black barrows. They were more for... Mm -hmm. For shifting bombs around, the, the white marrow has become quite friendly, obviously for yeah. reasons of their own. But we used to um, watch them go on raid. Well, we used, used to hear the plane start up in the morning, yes, and we'd see them come back about four in the afternoon. Yes, the ones that got back. Yes, and they, they used to be bits hanging off the planes. That was quite. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, it was quite sad. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
and there was one that he always used to fly up the Tilty Road mm -hmm. and tilt his wings to let his girlfriend know he was back. Oh yes, yes. Which yes. I think was very uh, yeah, touching. Very moving. Really. Very moving. Now, um, do you remember the policeman at that time? Yeah. Did you have any clashes with him at all? N not then, no. Who was it, anyway? Lewis. Oh, Mr Lewis, yeah. Yeah, he was lovely. Mm -hmm. A real fatherly sort of policeman. Mm -hmm. But later, uh, I wasn't very old, we had a young one come in who was absolutely ridiculous. He, mm -hmm. he, I had to go to court for riding two on a bike. <laughs> I'm interviewing this silly, and all I'd been was fishing, mm -hmm. and we went to look at the old lines six o'clock one morning, and I was giving me mate a lift home because mm -hmm. it was a fair way to go, and we'd got to go to school, mm -hmm. and he caught us, and uh, so, but he didn't last long, and obviously was moved yeah, well. on. I think it was too ridiculous. Now, do you have any particular friends at the time outside the family, or? Well, down the farm there was uh, a boy, Terence Rowland. Mm -hmm. He was. He still is a friend. I hadn't seen him for years, but his mum was good to us as well. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, she used to, um, holidays she used to feed me, mm -hmm. and we were quite close. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, we're talking mainly the war years. I mean, did you have any other entertainment uh, in outside the family? I mean, was the cinema I was running then, was it? It was cinema, yes. Did you ever go? Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not very often, but occasionally I went. And that mm. was sort of a nice bit of fun when we yeah. were there, but the sort of films are obviously a day to now. Do you remember anything particular about the cinema at all? I knew that when it rained you couldn't hear them talking. <laughs> what was that? Well, it, was the thun it thundered on the roof. Oh. You see, that used to make so much noise with the rain hitting the roof. <laughs> the noise was so... <laughs> and in an air raid, they used to come round and give you the choice of either leaving or staying. Mm. Now, talk about air raids, do you remember any particular air raids? Well, the, the, the worst one we had was when the, um, a single German aircraft dropped a landmine. That, that was the most frightening one mm. because that did shake the house when the landmine hit below the farm. Mm. But fortunately the scrap had broke so it went into the ground and the blast went up. Yeah. And that, else that would have obliterated everything. But mm. um, How far was, from your house home was that? I should say that was... 300 yards. Yeah, very close. That was close, a bit, only about 50 yards from the farm. Mm -hmm. What were you all doing at the time? Well, I, I was there with my sister and my grandmother. I don't know where everybody was, but I remember she said to me that I don't like the sound of this, that's too quiet. She said, you better get under the table. Mm -hmm. And as we bopped down to get under the table, that table bounced across the room. Cool. It was at the hit. And the, the paraffin lamp on top never fell over, fortunately enough. Mm -hmm. So it was very lucky. Mm -hmm. I suppose really one of the most pleasant air raids was when they used to put us under the stairs yes. when there was if I sounded too much activity above and uh, they put me under the stairs and I found a, a clay pot of gooseberry wine yeah. so when I come in I can hardly stand <laughs> and they said look the poor little sod's got under there and he's got a chill <laughs> they put me to bed and what was this homemade wine? Homemade wine yeah. Oh, did your granddad make a lot of that? Yeah, they used to make it, yeah. When, well, uh, that must have been pre-war because yeah. apart from uh, that sugar used to appear occasionally, oh, yes. yeah. you couldn't get sugar, but no, yeah, occasionally no. there was, used to be a load come to Coggeshaw. Yeah. And um, I also, he's dead now, so they can't charge him, but I had an uncle who was a chef in the mm. army. Mm -hmm. So at times he was quite well fed. Oh, yes, well. Yeah. And he used to live with us occasionally. Yes. So, so he bought a few rations home with him. Yeah, oh, well, um, good luck to him. He used to hear him threaten the privates yeah. on the lorry. They opened their mouth. Yeah. They... Of course, all the carnivals ceased during the war years. That's right, yeah. Were there any other fates or anything like that? There used to be small fates. Uh, Dr. Minardo's in different places. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember Dr. Minardo's had a novel idea. We couldn't, you couldn't get ice cream, of course. Mm -hmm. And so they used to put cold custard in corners, oh, mm -hmm. which the kids loved. Yes, of course. Unbelievable, because that yeah. was sweet and cold. Yes. And I thought it was very clever. Yeah. Now, you, the army was built on during the war, war years, well, after Dunkirk. I think it was after Dunkirk. Yes, I must have been. Yes. From about that time. Were there any military parades of any sort at that time? N uh, no. Not, not during the war. No, no. I think, I think the Warwicks. 
but there was a lot of Warwickshire the regiment put mm. Camp de Cox, and I think they were Warwicks they were going to put on us. Yes, yes. Mm. And, uh, now, uh, do you remember any other eccentric people in the town at the time, or I well, mean, as they appeared to you as a young lad? Well, there was there was quite a few actually. There was Drop the Pudding. No, what was? Uh, he, he he was. Why was he called that? Well, because that was something he shared in the street once. I've, I'm something done. He had to pick something else. There's no good mum on been and drop the pudding. So after that, he was known as Drop the Pudding. <laughs> but the poor bloke later went to Lally, his girlfriend packed him up, mm -hmm. and he tried. This is the absolute truth. He tried to pull his eye out with a fork. Mm -hmm. So he was always mm. nuts, you know. Yeah, a bit strange. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I mean, cobbles with people were funny. Mm -hmm. It was their sort of humour. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in the winter when chimneys were being repaired, that was cuckoos. All you could hear all over Cogwish was cuckoos. <laughs> like, there was one bloke actually known as Cuckoo Rainer. Oh. And there was a bloke footy ever. They, as soon as they got on a chimney, they used to keep going, shouting cuckoo. And the old girls used to say, God, they're early this year. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I had a good sense of humour. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other people you remember like that who, who came out with strange sayings? Well, I, I, when you look back now, a lot of them seem to be a little bit, without being cruel, yeah, uh, cruel. A, a little bit on the simple side, really. Yes. What about the doctors? You remember the doctor, or a doctor at the time? Yeah, Dr. Moffat. And was he, what was he like? He was, well, oh, we never really went to him much, but... You couldn't was, afford to. No, no, you couldn't. As a fact, he was, you know, the times I met him, I certainly wasn't frightened of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the dentist Griffiths, he mm -hmm. was similar to Doctor Muffet. Actually, he mm -hmm. was. They were very uh, professional in their attitude. Yes, 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 yes. And of course, had to be paid for. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Did your mum belong to any like hospital association, like anything like that? Do you know, or well, sometimes they used like, to pay a penny, didn't they? That's right. A penny and. Live forever, that was said, wasn't it? Yeah. Pay a penny, and I think she paid the penny. Yeah. Did you go to church whilst you were? Yeah. Which church did you go to? Baptist. Baptist church, yes. Baptist church, I used to go uh, regularly. Mm -hmm. That was a sort of a dumb thing yes. for young youngsters. And who was the minister then? It was well, Harry Rolton, Fred Eagle. Mm -hmm. uh, they would be quite big noise in there. Edith Rolton used to play the organ. Mm -hmm. And Ivan Boone used mm -hmm. to play the organ, very good organist. Mm. And they used to import uh, one of the ministers, Mr. Spolden from Bradwell, mm -hmm. and we also had vis visit ministers. Mm -hmm. who Any out outings at all? But yes, we had um, obviously in the worst years of the war, the outing was down to the Abbey. Yes. <laughs> what, uh, what, that, what does that mean? Well, we'd go to there and play near the river and yes. a little trip on the punt, and, mm -hmm. which when you were very young, it was oh, all very yeah. enjoyable. Yes. Yeah. And then. I remember we'd been to Dover Court, uh, Walton. How did you get there? Uh, they used to hire a bus. That bus. was in latter years, you know. Oh, one of Moore's buses. Moore's buses, yeah. Yes, yes. It took ages to get everywhere. Yes. You know, it just takes so long, in, and especially Dover Court. Um, yes, yes. But it was all enjoyable and yes. adventure. Wasn't it? That was that after the war, was it? Or? That, that would have been just after just the war. Just after yeah. the war, yeah. Yeah. yeah, during the war, that was they were local. They used to lay on the local. Yeah. The um, did you know anybody who lost their husbands during the war? Um, when I was very young, I heard at one of the Collison, one of the Collison boys was killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that meant nothing to me. No. They lived, did live in the cradle house. Quite then worked on the mm -hmm. same farm. No. And. Um, by and large, they were exciting times for the boys. They were. Yeah, yeah they were. That's mm. it sounds a silly thing to say, but they were actually, because mm. that was one big adventure. And Do you remember uh, any of the planes crashing at uh, Earl's Cone, or? Yeah, we we had a, I think that was a doodlebug crashed at Palmer's Farm. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, there was a, a, a fortress come down just up where the uh, bypass is now, mm -hmm. of Wisdoms. Mm -hmm. In fact, actual fact, the hedge there has never grown. No. There's still a gap in the hedge, mm. so that must have tore really deep yes. roots out, mustn't it? Uh, and um, I know on Invasion Day, I got up because the sky was full of planes, mm. and 
I kept running in to tell everybody and everybody was telling me to go back to bed. And then I run back and I run out again and there was seven men jumped out of an aeroplane. Mm. So I run back and told my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, where are they going to land? I said, I don't know. I said, but there's one getting very low. I think he'll land next to our house. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother said, look, as soon as he's gone, grab that chute. <laughs> she won't worry about the bloke. So he come down and the farmers took him back and they gathered the chute up and took the chute with them. Because oh, so, oh. that chute was meant a lot to people then because there was no oh, clothes about it. That was silk. So they used to knit with the silk, didn't yes, they? Yes, I can. Make socks in there. Yes, I've heard so, wedding dresses been made of it. That's right, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, we used to get, if anybody found a chute that was so big, we used to get a share of it. Yes. And that meant a lot. You say after the war you moved up to the hamlet here again? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was still at the Elskone Grammar School what, when we moved up here. What year did you go to grammar school? What year? Uh, that would be in 47, 48. Yeah, just after the war? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did you get there? Uh, Moore's bus. Moore's they bus. used to go through at Upper State. Mm -hmm. So it all depends which... So you must have passed the entrance exam? Yeah, yes, I passed it. So you're quite a bright lad. Well, yeah, I was seen a bit that in those <laughs> days, but unfortunately I, I hadn't been there a few months and I developed appendicitis and I mm. lost, well, I think it was, I don't know, it was six or eight weeks schooling, mm. which then is a lot of schooling. And, and mm -hmm. So when I went back, a lot of the subjects I just lost completely mm. and I never did catch up on no, not a shame. Like algebra for a start, which was important at school and French. Mm. I just didn't, um, so I, I sort of was lagged behind. I was still all right on the uh, general arithmetic and things mm. like that, the sciences. So how how many more how many years did you say there? Well, I'll be honest with you. I stopped till I was about sixteen, mm. coming seventeen, mm. and quite honestly, Steve, I'm not moaning, but we were so hard up. I mm. said to my mother, "That's ridiculous. We stopped at school because mm -hmm. we never got no money." And mm. I was at the age when my other friends were going out to the films and that, and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I was working at Brandon's. That's the part butchers. time. He was the butcher. Yeah, mm -hmm. Brownie's the butcher's part time. Monday night and Tuesday morning, and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Well, really, that was too much. Yes. And so. Oh, well, because you were going to school in in the well. time. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, and much against my mother's wishes, I um, I left school a little mm -hmm. bit early, mm -hmm. and, um, and I got a job as an apprentice, so uh, heating engineer. Yes. Oh, that Critland Winston's. Critland Winston, yes. yes, at Brown Street. Yeah, that's right. I got yeah. a job there which, with a four-year apprenticeship. It was mm. normally five, but because I'd been to a grammar school, yeah. they'd give me a four-year one. What was your brother doing then? My brother was at um, the... Uh, Had he left school? He he left just... Uh, I think he left just uh, about the same time as me. Mm -hmm. And he went, like, the 13 plus... Mm -hmm. um, and he done very well. He was very mm -hmm. bright at school. He failed eleven plus, funny enough. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then he went to the sec uh, the other uh, mm -hmm. Colchester, mm -hmm. and he done very well. Mm -hmm. But I think he had the advantage, Steve, again, of Harry Rolton's daughter Edith, who was one of the brightest girls that ever lived in Coggeshall. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. yeah, so, and I think. He got a little bit of um, extra tuition, boost, yes. which yeah. held him in great stead through the rest of his life. Yes. So, you're, when you moved to Hamlet, your mother was working for Kings. Has she started working for Kings? Yes. Yes, yes she was a seed sorter, mm -hmm. which it was mm -hmm. a terrible job, as you think. Yes. Yeah. So, although they did put her down into the packing room, which much better made her much happier. Yes. She did get a job. Up the stitching factory, but when they found out, they give her a different a change of. Mm -hmm. And I suppose budget. she used to go like all the others used to go pea picking and things like That's that right. to make yeah. ends meet. Yeah, she. Uh, in actual fact, she was quite a good pea picker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one day she she actually picked twenty p bags of peas, bags, which is a hell of a lot of peas. An awful one. That was a long day. That was yeah. I mean, when I went pea picking, even at me, in my prime, the most I ever picked mm -hmm. was about fourteen. Yes. Mm. And so she must have been a... And how much did she get a bag? Any idea? Uh, not in those, about three shillings, I think, which was quite good money, really. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 
astonishing, isn't it? Like, yeah, but uh, I mean the best, I, when I was pee picking, I, about five shillings was the st norm, mm -hmm. which would go down as the peas got bigger. Mm. And because during all this time, your dad didn't put an appearance in? No, we never saw him after I was nine years old. No, no he um, he rode off and uh, very sad. It was sad. I do feel sorry for him really. But. Mm, very sad. And damn hard for your mum. <laughs> I was, yeah. Yes, yes. Do you know what the rents were at the council house when you moved up there? I honestly don't. No. No, I honestly don't, Steve. No, no. I, the, the first rent I remember was fif uh, fifteen shillings. Mm -hmm. So that could well have been 15 shillings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um, oh, it probably would be, I imagine so. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, you became an apprentice uh, heating engineer. Yeah. And um, how long was that for? Your four, years. Four, four years. Four years. Four years apprenticeship. Yes. And then, uh, obviously, I was 21 then, so I was due for national service. Oh, yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, so I was called up for national service, and um, I went on a net for an Air Force um, mm. test and I'll be honest with you, I was, the test was taken with about 14 or 15 lads mm. who every time I spoke they made a noise like Farmer Giles, you know, who oh, are oh, I see. and I thought well I can't stick this. Mm. So the, the man in charge says, anybody out here who really wanted to do, go in at any other service? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I put my hand up. I said, I really want to go in the Navy. Mm -hmm. He said, well, pop off down the office, down the passage. Mm -hmm. So I went down there and I passed that test and I went in the Navy. Mm -hmm. But they were probably nice blokes, but yeah. just high spirits and probably knew each other. Had you any real indication going for the Navy? Had you any real? Well, I, I, the back of my mind, I'd love to have done. Mm -hmm. I did want to go in the Navy all my life, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. I never dreamed I'd get in national service because yeah. they only took a, a very small percent. Oh, no. That's, that's right. So I was that's right. well pleased when I got in. And what trade did you become in? What? No, I in was a mechanical engineer, mm -hmm. which, which is known as the Stokers. Yes, well, you were more in a way carrying on your apprenticeship exactly. in a different way. No problem. I'd done everything that yes. down there that I knew. I not, never knew it all, but I mean, I knew exactly oh, what it was yes. all about. That was useful. Yeah, in that way. was. Did you enjoy your time in the Navy? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's a marvellous career. Did you travel far? Uh, we went round the Med a couple of times. Round where? The Mediterranean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we, one of the best trips we had was the Channel Islands. That mm. was a, a real holiday. Mm -hmm. And then and the last three months, uh, really, mm -hmm. we went to the Salantanda for three weeks, mm -hmm. which before that was a holiday, mm -hmm. and that was marvellous. Yeah. I mean, if you just said that, that was real Spanish. Yeah. And then later we done all the, um, not all the ports, but uh, carnival days up the south coast mm -hmm. at different ports. Mm -hmm. And that was the last three months. Mm -hmm. So I really regretted leaving that. Yeah. What what ship were you on? I, originally I was on, when I came out of Drake Barracks, obviously I went to Rayleigh training, mm -hmm. then Drake Barracks, then the Centaur. Mm -hmm. And I was on the Centaur apart from the last what sort of ship was that? It's an aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. Oh, yeah, yes. oh, that yes. was interesting, but I mm. didn't really, I wasn't so keen on that as I was the Grafton, which was an anti-submarine frigate. Oh, I see. Oh, and yes. that was very interesting. When you went to Canary, were you sort of um, showing the flag or sort of parading for the carnivals? Were you? Yeah, yeah when you... that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, we used to do a little bit of each, like yes. showing the flag, and mm, yes. I'd never ever done the marches because they'd got... Yes. They also had a few marines on board oh, oh, yeah. and seamen. Was there any particular conflict going on at that time? You, you I, to... I went in just after the Egyptian Suez oh, yes. conflict mm -hmm. and nothing happened during my period. Oh, well, that was for they, yeah. sold, they sold the Maltese dockyards, mm -hmm. which I thought there was, we was there at the time mm -hmm. and they was arming a lot of people with pickaxe handles mm -hmm. and a lot of people with one or two, about every dozen, mm -hmm. 12 men in a rifle. Mm -hmm. And I was told to get up there and get a pickaxe handle. Yes. And I said to the petty officer, mm -hmm. which th this shouldn't have happened really, mm -hmm. I said, look Tilston, mm -hmm. I've loaned you money, you do me a favour, mm -hmm. I don't want to get hurt out there. <laughs> so he said, all right then, he said, grab a broom and sweep up. Mm -hmm. And the Maltese charged mm -hmm. down the dockyard, mm -hmm. and this was funny really, and stopped a bit. 
20 yards from the uh, crew, yeah. and then the wives come in after them oh. and chase them out. And this has actually happened uh, because they didn't realise they got the sack to be reimbursed by Bailey Meters. Mm -hmm. You see, they had to. Well, that was the conflict because they, they thought the they lost the job. The, the Navy were going and they got no work. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you what, Steve, if you'd have seen the way they lived, that was heartbreaking. Yes. You know, they yeah. used to come on and take our slots and the gravy used to go in a bowl and half a sausage and that was mm. theirs. Isn't that, really? Yeah, that was put in a box for them. Oh, it was yeah. terrible, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And it was so hard up. Mm -hmm. So you did, what, two years in the Navy? Uh, well, I, I was in for two years, but after about 20 months mm. I was told that no not 20 months after uh, a year and six months I was told that to get me stuff together mm. because they'd knocked three months off of our oh, service, service mm. because of um, they were finished with national service mm -hmm. and the Navy was the first was the only oh. one to get three months off oh. Oh. so I come out three months earlier oh. Oh. Then you resumed your apprenticeship, or no, I didn't. I, I done. I'd finished my apprenticeship, but mm -hmm. I went back. And whereas I could have insisted they took me back, which that was the law. Mm -hmm. They said they hadn't got any work, and I, I didn't want to go back to a, a firm with not much work. And no. In all fairness, mm -hmm. I um I was glad because I just wanted to break out, and, yeah. and I worked for a London or a Birmingham firm and a London a Birmingham London firm and called Two Goods, mm -hmm. and worked up with the Swedish Aerodrome. Oh. which was mm. a, a marvellous job mm. and I was up there for 18 months building, they called them tobacco homes, they were paid for mm. with tobacco from all accounts. Mm. Now tell me, um, when you were, did you belong to, were there any clubs in the town you belonged to at all when you were a young man? Or did you... Well, you the Cultural Youth Centre, no, obviously yeah. everybody, well most where, people. Where was that? That was at St Peter's Hall. St Peter's Hall. Mm, that yeah. was fun there, yeah. that was very nice. And what sort of things they do then? Well, table tennis, they, a snooker room, mm. very small snooker room. A snooker room, room to that, A very small table, mm. but that was a game of snooker. Who ran that? There was a, pers a bloke called Percy Firth. Mm -hmm. He was in charge and mm -hmm. he's, oh, he put up with everything. I've heard the name. But he's I... a lovely, lovely old boy, really. Mm. We didn't mm. know how lucky we were. Did you have any dancers? Oh, all the time, yeah. yeah. Weekend dancers. We used to bite for miles to dances, mm -hmm. like uh, Wickham Bishops. Um, but when I told my wife when we, how far we biked, she'd never believe it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Conan Game was a regular. And how did you get there? Bike. Oh, All bike, bikes, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And he was lucky <laughs> if you, when you come home, you went and had your lights pinched, but there you yeah. go, that was all part of that. Yeah. You have lots of girlfriends then? Well, we had, yeah, we used to meet girls. Yes, that's right, yeah. Oh, so, uh, oh that's, yeah. that's lovely. Always pleased to see each other. Like, yeah. That used to be great fun. Offered to join once, but I never heard anything, so I never bothered anymore. Well, the Con Club, or like that. I joined the Con Club for a short spell, mm -hmm. but um, no. I found that a little bit boring and yes. old-fashioned. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's fine. Now, uh, now that you're more or less earning something, did you ever get away on holidays at all? Funny enough, you say that the the bloke who I went on holiday with when I was about eighteen, yeah. he died last week. Oh, yeah. he was a year younger than me, Derek Wilshire. Mm. And we went to Skegness, oh, uh, Billy Butlins, <laughs> which really corny, you know, but we, we enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And I lost my train ticket, my return ticket on the way home, and I had a pie again, which hurt. And, uh, oh dear. So oh, dear. that hurt, but uh, I mean, the holiday was nothing wrong with the holiday, it was quite fun. I have, did you have to go down to London for the train, or? Yeah, we went to Liverpool Street, yeah, and right. then up to Skeggy. Yeah, and how long did you go for? I think that was. It was only a week. Yeah, it might have been longer, I can't yeah. remember. I should think it was just a week. Yeah. It was great fun, though. Do you remember the end of the war here? Were there any celebrations that might have taken place? Yes, I remember the, the v, VD Day, VE Day, yes. that's it, with the big bonfire on the hill. Yes. They, that was terrific. Everybody was yeah. letting themselves go. And yeah. A man named Bright, who was leading the march with the big drum and he's dressed up with a 
with a lion's head on. Oh yes. And everybody was behind him singing and you know, that was quite well, fun. during the conga were they was Yes right, yeah, yeah, that sort of thing and he oh. beat the drum. Oh, quite a few people were a bit uh, overcome by alcohol I imagine. I should imagine <laughs> they were because one of them, you see they were jumping the fire and Yeah. Were they, yeah. Yeah. Were the Americans involved with that at all? Um I, I, they must have been a bad but I can't remember Mm. Much of them really, perhaps, perhaps they were kept out of it. Oh, I know, because they, they moved on to France, hadn't they? I should say they had. Yes. I know when the Brits turned up at Mark's Hall, that was a different kettle of fish. Yes. Christ, they, they tightened up on security. Oh, yeah, did they? Cool, did they? I mean, we, we couldn't get near the base. Oh. Mm. They'd be chasing you, when she was with 50 yards of that base, she was mm. being chased. Mm -hmm. But the, with the Americans, we used to, well, you never believe it, we'd keep a tent their store tent, they had a big canvas storage tent full of food mm -hmm. and we could walk from Bunnick Wood behind it, load a box up with food yeah. and walk home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the thing was then, never to hide it because some, somebody would see you hide it. When you went back for it, it would be gone. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Things have changed a lot since then. Yeah. Yes, I, yes, I don't think uh, the town's quite as friendly as it was. Mm, not really. Yeah. Uh, people were friendly then, there was no yes. doubt about it, but no, nobody was very wealthy, that was the difference, yes. you see, and yeah. so they, they had more time yeah. to, to spend with each other. Mm -hmm. At the moment, everybody wants to do their own thing and yes. move on, don't they? Of course, they're all, in some ways, they're all related, all they work for the same bosses, don't they? That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. And the, the pastimes were simple, like mm. fishing and yeah. rabbiting and things like that. Yeah. And of course the old local pubs where they used to tell the biggest lies you've ever heard. Yeah, yes. Expect yeah. you to believe them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you recall the the chemist at the time? Yeah, I remember printing practice very well because yeah. uh, I often used to go there with a small even once I went there was a with a something in my eye. Mm -hmm. And that was marvellous and I offered Pinky Tuppence. Yes. And he said, That's all right, he said that'll be a penny. Yeah. And uh, so he was, to me, he was a marvellous man, and he always explained everything, yeah. even when he was young, what, what he was giving you and why. I believe sometimes somebody preferred his medicine to the doctors. Oh, my mother did for a start, yes. every time. Yes. And I think that did get up a few noses in, yes. at the end of his days. Yes. But so I know one funny story with Pinky, when um, he used to do eye tests, mm. and the man went off with the glasses, and after about a week he went back. I said, these glasses really, Mr. Prentice, are no good at all. And Pinky said, thank God you brought them back. He said, I'll give you mine. <laughs> and that, that was an actual fact story. Lovely when did you get your first car or van? Uh, I was at Colchester Market. And uh, you'd never believe it, but there was an Austin Tira come up for auction and I bought it for £25. Oh, yes. What sort of car was it? Austin Tura. Austin Tura. Yeah, and um, I, ha I had that for two years cost me nothing apart from tax and insurance and I sold it what I thought was a lot of money for 30 pound <laughs> when I had to go to the army and uh, navy mm -hmm. sorry mm -hmm. and um was near that up for sale for about seven thousand at minimum mm -hmm. that they so it just that was 1936 mm -hmm. to right. yeah. what size engine was it I really can't remember that was big mm -hmm. but you used to, then you pressed a button to start it mm -hmm. And you knew that was running when the bonnet starts to tremble. <laughs> so, and uh, that was marvellous, really. Yeah. And there was also a starting handle, if you knew oh, yeah. those days. Always had a starting handle, didn't yeah. it? Well, you often used, actually. You did. Yeah. Many times, I mm. used that, yeah. How did you learn to drive? Um, well, when I was a critical witness, I got an L test and I used to shunt around the yard. Mm -hmm. And then later, they, uh, once, they let me drive them home from work, but no more. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that good a driver to start with, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then, after I bought the Austin Tura, mm -hmm. that must have been, I don't know, perhaps I only had it for a year, because after I bought the Austin Tura, I'd got my um, learner's license, and the uh, sales crisis started. Mm -hmm. And learner drivers didn't have anybody sitting beside them, mm -hmm. and so I just got in and drove it. <laughs> and I, I, I had a rough idea how to drive, and I also drove tractors on the yep. farm, of course, which helped. Yes. Yeah. And 
that when I went for my test, I failed my first test, but um, I drove off on my own anyhow, which didn't make any difference. <laughs> so the next time I went back, he, I had a, bit, a five minute test, which uh, he said, oh. it's obviously you can drive, oh. Oh. which was silly. Let me it's a bit different to that, eh? That's real, I wouldn't oh. want to do it now. No, no. Sort of one of the biggest transport firms in Coggleshaw was Hutley's. Oh, they're Hutley's. But, yes. uh, the, the, Norries were so small that, that, which we used to think were huge in those days, mm. that was a joke. And then that was took, taken over by British Transport. Well, national. Yeah, I do. I remember the um, in the school playground we was all playing one day, and this he seemed quite a well-fed American coming down the road in a jeep, smoking a cigar, mm. and he lost control of the jeep on that bend, and uh, he come through the uh, he hit the school gates. Mm. There was a young blonde haired uh, evacuee playing near the gates and uh, the gates snapped and went down on top of him oh. and there was blood everywhere and I remember we, one or two of us, we was only small boys, tried to lift the gates off of him. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one per person in particular was uh, George Leatherdale oh, yeah. who um, thought he'd be better lifting from the other side so he ran across the top of the gates to get to the other side mm. but every time we lifted the gate the poor boy a bit of wire had got in the boy's eyes so he was lifting his head up oh, as well so that was quite horrific really mm -hmm. but he did come back to school later mm -hmm. all patched up and mended mm -hmm. and the, uh, the Americans sent a huge bag of sweets down for the mm. local mm. school boys oh. which was very nice and we yeah. did after that once or twice go up to a, a Christmas dinners oh, yeah. at the American air base laid oh, yes. on oh, yes. the Americans, which was all very nice. Yes, oh, oh yeah. That's that marvellous. And how many of you went up in the idea? The whole school. Yes, oh, about 100 or more? Uh, I think it was 300. Was that 300? Oh. Uh, am I right? No, 180. 180, yeah. That's right, 180. Right. Now you did say, you did mention just then about evacuees. Were there There's, many evacuees in the town? Yeah, they, they funny enough, they, uh, they turned up and nobody troubled to explain to us who they were, mm -hmm. which always annoyed me at the thought of young boys being taken away from the parents mm -hmm. and coming to a school. And we just thought they was we um, obviously weren't nice to them. We there was little gangs, we evacuees, yes, local yes. boys, and Bernardis. Yes. and so there was a certain amount of rivalry. Yes, yeah. but were there any fights? Yeah, it was that was. That there was always yeah. the start with, yeah. and then as that we got used to them, mm. we got become friends, obviously. Yeah. But Did even they, then, mm. we never knew who they were. No. Nobody said they're evacuees. Yeah. Did they stay very long, or? Um, mm. Well, they like, mm. they seemed. Some of them seemed to stop mm. for a long while. Mm. A lot of them just disappeared overnight and went mm. back. Mm. But. Um, did any, of them, did any of them remain in the village forever? <laughs> I can't remember. I know that we've had them come down to see us. Not us mm. in particular, but the carnival days. Mm. They've turned up and said mm. who they were. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in one particular, there was a, a boy named Bob Strullett. Mm. I've met him a couple of times since the war, mm. but I haven't seen him lately. No. Yeah. Oh, oh very, very interesting. But, uh, Go on, yes, yeah. But there's one in particular, I met him and I never knew him, he never went to our school mm. and he came up to me and he said who he was mm. and he said, uh, is that bastard Ozzy Hughes still around, he <laughs> can give me hell. <laughs> so I felt very sympathetic towards him because I knew Ozzy and he was a little fucker. Yeah. Oh well. It was... Just a second. Why do you remember him so much then, uh, well, Colin? He was, he was huge for a boy of my age, mm -hmm. and and also, funny enough, he had um, ginger hair, mm -hmm. and he um, he actually had whiskers, oh. and he was only he couldn't have been about seven or eight, oh, and uh, mm -hmm. but he was so big and strong mm -hmm. and such a humour mm -hmm. that I, I don't think I've ever met a nicer boy. He was in but, your class? Yeah, in my yeah. class at school. Oh, yeah. And he was so harmless mm -hmm. that uh, and he disappeared overnight. Mm -hmm. So obviously his mum decided that yeah. he'd be better off back with her. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
which a lot of them did, didn't they? Because mm. nothing happened for years no, during the war, did no, it? No, that's quite true. And some of them went back and then yeah. were placed elsewhere. That's right. Mm, but yeah. he's good fun. I often wonder what happened to him. Um, you're a big fella now, Colin. Were you, were you always a big child? No. 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 In actual fact, I was all, all often taken to the doctors, mm -hmm. thinking I'd got consumption. I was mm -hmm. so thin. Mm, well. And, uh, yes. And then things change and you that's, start to put on weight. Didn't that's you? right. Yes. But uh, I know I used to be the worry of the family. In fact, at one time they didn't expect me to live. I got so thin. Oh, good. But I was eating. Yes. But well, I thought I was. I mean, but mm -hmm. I, I know one or two people who were the same. Was your brother slim as well? Oh, or? No, he was always well it's proportioned. Extraordinary. And so was my sister. Yeah, That's why it looked worse in me, didn't it? Oh, you made up for it since. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know where it came from, really. In actual fact, this is the family build if you don't watch it. Yeah. 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 I mean, your uncle and your mum were fairly large, weren't they? That's right, yeah. yeah. My granny was even bigger. Yes, yeah. yeah. My granddad was, he, he yeah. worked all his life, and so yes. he kept his. How old was he when he died? He was just about 90, mm -hmm. and my granny was 95. Mm -hmm. They both, he, my grandmother was older than my granddad, mm -hmm. but he was quite a well known horseman, and people did used to come to him for advice. Yes. Because yes. he, he did have a small library on mm -hmm. horses and ailments, yes. which in those days was yes. unheard of, really. Yes, yes. But he, that was his life, horses. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I know.